Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday, and it's October 24th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And you can see here, it's looking at the daily chart first. Uh, we closed higher. We closed well off the top, off the highs, but we did close higher. So it looks like we're trying to creep higher right here. We you still could call this sideways for now. We'll see what tomorrow brings, but uh, there's what it looks like on the daily chart as you can see it's there's some mixed trading in here even though it's mostly up and that's what it's going to look like on the 2000 tick chart as well so um, we, we traded much higher but we saw sold off the highs considerably so let's flip over there and take a look and go through the trades not a lot of trades today uh, but let's flip over there okay here's a look at it and you can see it's, it's some mixed trading here we trended up uh, we trended up first, then kind of went sideways. We still got made a new high on this two-tiered channel here, and then sold off, had a break, moved to a new low. We really got two measured legs down there. You could almost draw you a new channel on this one if you wanted. Uh, I just kind of did the spike and channel portion of it. And then we reversed out of here and trended up nicely back up uh, into, the into the 230, and you can see we kind of went haywire right up here near the closes and um, closed back down. Although we're up for today, we closed well off the highs. And notice both times we broke out, we pretty much moved a measured move either based on two legs or the width of the, of the range, which is this dash line. And they both came out to the same place. We went a little bit lower, but we quickly reversed. And then notice on the highs, we made a perfect measured move before we sold off again. There's not a lot of trades here today. Um, there's a lot of chopping around, odd spots with the price action. So uh, we had a little group of trades here. Well, of course, we'll talk about it when we get there. But other than that, this little piece here, there's just a few little mixed trades in there, and it's just real hard trading. Somebody actually emailed me and said that they had a hard time finding the trade today. Well, it's because there weren't a lot of setups today. Uh, a lot of mixed trading here. There's some pretty good trends, but there weren't a lot of second entries in them. It's just a lot of, it's like prices drop and then you just kind of chop sideways and then drop or uh, reverse and go the other way. And so it's just difficult trading. It's just one of those days and you'll get days like this. This is where, you know, I talked about it in my mid-morning report or chart this morning. Be patient, read the chart. Don't, don't do what you expect. Read the chart and figure out what you think prices are going to do you're still somewhat as you get better at this you'll be pretty good at figuring out what prices are doing and where they're trying to go will you get it right 100 percent? no but you'll get it right much more often and when you know where prices are going you wait till prices get there and and do what you think they're going to do then you look for a setup so let's say you found this trend channel well you're waiting on prices to come back to that trend channel and give you a setup we were doing the same thing here we're waiting on prices to come back, but this time you don't get one. You get the break, but yeah, prices will probably make a new high, so wait for the setup. When you get one, go along with it. If it starts trending in the other way like it does here, then start waiting for prices to come back to that trend line. And when they do, try to go along. And when they get bound to these lows, try to get, try, or I'm sorry, get short with the trend coming down. But then once you get back to the trend line, look to get long because you've had support down here. Once you've got this trend here, look for, wait for prices to come back to the trend line and give you a setup. And so you don't just look for, I mean, amateurs look for an entry on every swing where professional traders are reading the chart, looking at the context, figuring out where the trends and the ranges are, and they're waiting on prices to come back to those important support and resistance levels. When you got a range like this, the support is where you're looking for entries and the resistance is where you're looking for entries. You might get some entries in the trends if they're big enough. And on these trend lines, you're waiting for it to come back to the trend line. And, and these trend lines are just angled support and resistance. They're no different than this range right here. They're just angled. So always remember that. But anyway, let's zoom in here and go through the trades. We had this 8.45 news item, so you needed to be out around 8.30 or so. And it was really five minutes or so, and things had kind of 
settled back down. So, uh, it wasn't a real, it wasn't a real big, uh, wasn't anything real big with this news item. So this manufacturing this PMI stuff is you know, you usually don't get much out of that, but you need to be aware of it and maybe be out 15 minutes prior. And then, um, if nothing's going on, you can jump back in or if something does happen, jump back in as soon as it settles down. So anyway, um, 7.30 came, and we had this two-tiered channel working up. We just come off the high, and 7.30 is right in, or 7 o'clock is right in here. We run back up, and we make a new high here. Notice we got the green channel. We get a two-legged correction, move to a new high, and then prices sell off, and you get a triple test there. Normally, you probably wait for a lower high because we did make a new high here, but... Uh, it's probably time for prices to at least come back to the midline. So if you got room, maybe you take that trade. Uh, I prefer to wait on a lower high, which we just never really get. Um, so keep that in mind. There, there was actually a second entry here, but that looks too congested and the signal bars kind of iffy. So I, I'd, I'd hold on that one. <laughs> wait on something better. But prices drop back down. They bounce here. It looks like we're going to go higher. And notice we kind of find resistance there and then we drop on down to the trend line um, this looks like two legs back and it bounces right off the key entry point I'm really trading this as a failed breakout when it normally I tell you on a failed breakout out I'd mark this green say wait on a higher low and if you got one mark that blue but because this is off a key entry point and you can see it broke lower first and then turned up uh, that's pretty bullish and most breakouts are going to fail and it's probably going to trap a lot of shorts so I like going long there. Uh, and again, the reason I made this one blue is because it confirms the trend line and uh, gives you a, th a third touch on a failed break out of there. And you can see it rocket up there. You're getting rejection there. So I like that entry. Um, that takes us into 830. Then next thing you know, we get a break. We try to make a new high and it fails. There is a failure here but just not really where you're looking for a failure and you got a bunch of support there so just let that go and then now you get a break but you're waiting um you're just looking for a setup to go long that maybe for a retest uh, but you get your break here you try and try and try to make a new low and finally you get a triple test here with a nice signal bar as long as you got room to get out there I'd probably take that anyway because we're making higher highs higher low higher high higher low low and so you'd expect that we'd make it so probably maybe we're going to test the new high uh, you only end up getting a scalp out of it but it still works and then it comes back down if you try to get any more you got stopped out on your runners or anything uh, i marked this one green just because we don't have the new low in on this khaki channel and you see it does end up making it so you can't ignore that that it, it doesn't but a triple test with a good signal bar, if it's not congestion, it's usually going to lead to at least a scalp, and it does there. So, so I did mark that one green. Um, you do get a failure here, but you're not looking for a failure really right there. You need to get have it. You can't take one right into the midline on a range. Uh, turns down right off the highs. Uh, we haven't turned down there but once or twice, so you don't really have enough evidence to say, okay, it's time to go short right off of it. You need a lower high or something and you don't you get one here but no signal bar and it just runs straight down to the lows and takes off again here you do get a higher low i like that one as long as you got room back to the midline or um, yeah the midline and we have been going from high to low so i'd probably take it in anyway um run straight up turns down again but notice it makes a higher uh, high than this last one so uh, you don't really get a setup to go short there anyway. But then you're just chopping sideways. No real setup here. Fails out the bottom and then, or breaks out the bottom and quickly fails. Again, you don't get a setup. Runs up and you're just chopping. This is too risky. Just stay out of this. Maybe you take this one. Because um, by that time, it's pretty obvious we got a range across here. So maybe you take that failed breakout. Notice the two bar matching high and it breaks higher and fails and turns down. 
Uh, I doubt I would trade that on the engulfing bar, but you could go short there. Just trying to ride it back to the to the EMA right there. And it does find support across there and runs up one more time. Uh, this time I'm more wary of going short there because even though this looks sideways, it looks like we're starting to make higher highs and higher lows. So I just sit on this one. Comes back too congested here. Uh, it finally does break lower here out of this range. It just finds a lower support right here. But you can't go long right into the top of the range either. So I don't see anything until finally it sets up this trend line here. And um, you make a new high here. Basically, I'm sorry, you make a new high. You, you actually come down and you get a break here and a new low. So this, this trend's over. So then you really get two legs back. There's a second entry here, but it's not anything you want to trade. And then you get the lower high. So that's what we're looking at. Uh, there's actually a lower high right here, but that's a little congested. So it's like a little breakout pullback right off the key entry point. And it does break higher and turn down. Uh, you could trade that on the engulfing bar, but I'd probably wait for this to close and make sure you got enough room to get out. Uh, if you do, I like that trade. Uh, notice it bounces there again. I don't think you want to go long here because you're right back into the resistance. Um, and then it turns back down and no shorts again. And then you're just chopping sideways again. Um, there's a second entry short here. It is off the EMA. Uh, there is some resistance there. If you got enough room there, maybe you take that. It's kind of in an odd spot there. Usually you want it to be off this midline. Um, and maybe the EMA running congruent with that. Because there's a good chance it bounces and and, or just keeps working sideways till it gets back to the trend line. But you do have enough room here. Or if you have enough room there, you'd want to go short. And there's enough room you can see. So I didn't mark that one, but you could argue for it to be green. Then we're just chopping along. And notice how we're making, we can't even get back up to the original support. There are two legs back here, but it's not anything you want to take right into the lows here. And, and even when we drop down, it just gets into a tighter range. I don't see anything there I want to trade. And finally, you get a break of the yellow one, move to a new low, and look where it bounces right off the original support we had drawn across there. Uh, I don't think you want to go long there. Wait on something higher, and you actually break lower here and fail and turn up. I like right, trading that on the engulfing bar. Uh, if you wait, there's there's too much stem there. I like that one on the engulfing bar. It takes a minute to take off, but it does. And then it just turns back down again. And I don't see this is all too sideways and congested. You can't enter up here. And it just takes off. And you're looking for it to make a new low. So um, it, it makes a new low and just keeps going. So once you kind of got this, it looks like there's a little spike and channel down on the retest. So once you got this channel... I'd try to play it. I still don't see anything. You quickly just kind of drop down to the measured move, and I don't see any longs or shorts there, and we finally drop lower. Bounce, come back, and get back inside here. Um, this looks like two legs back. It makes a higher low, but you could still consider that two legs back, uh, but it looks a little congested here. Uh, that's a pretty good signal bar, but you really need it to come back and test it one more time before you confirm it. So, I mean, you might argue for that one to be green right there. Higher or low here, but not a setup. And then you're just chopping sideways again. And notice we had that play earlier uh, where it breaks out and hits the line. So this is a repeat. Breaks out, bounces off the key entry point, confirms the trend line. Get, it breaks lower first, goes up. You could trade that on the engulfing, but I'd probably wait for it to close. But either way you trade it, I like that one. Then you get a higher low, again, off the key entry point, inside the range. I like that one. Um, this one, you do probably want to try to play this where you got room to get out. You can see this was kind of the top, but the highs were on up there. So just make sure there's room before the last highs. And you can see there's room there. You're pressing if you just try to go the high where you kind of mark the range, but you can see that one was two points. This one was two and a quarter. Um, 
I went back and forth about that one, but with it being off that key entry point, I think you have to take it. Comes back here, gives you a failure, but it's too congested there. But then it runs on to the top. Then it comes back. And we just ran to the top, back to the bottom, so we'll probably run to the top again. Again, it's off the key entry point. If you've got room to get out before here, take it. Same thing here. You actually get a little more room here. It's off the key entry point, and you're running up and down. And if you end up taking this one, it takes off. So you might even get a runner there, depending on how you play it. And that would be a pretty nice move. Two legs back to the EMA here, but again, it looks really congested. It would have worked, but you don't know that in advance. Um, you get a high or low here, but you don't have a whole lot of room back to the highs. It's, it's moved a good bit. It's more like a break out of that congestion. Uh, and we're just kind of chopping along. Finally comes back and tests this again and then gets a high or low. And notice you got a new high. So that's a first entry pull back. When it breaks higher there, that's a second entry. Again, you could trade this on the engulfing bar and go long one tick above it, or you could wait till it closes and then go one tick above that. It actually triggers back here or drops back here one more time and then reverses. So it's probably going to act like a trap. Uh, the problem is you don't have very much room from that high to the high of the range, as you can see. So that makes that one suspect. I think you have to keep. Uh, skip it and then we just chop sideways into the 230 time so yeah not a lot of trades today we had a bunch of kind of right in here just after lunch one o'clock and then we had a few more in the morning and it's just one of those days where it's just not a huge there's, there's just there's a lot of movement in both directions a lot of sideways movement and just nothing consistent um it's con and not a lot of second entries when we did trend. So just one of those days. And we have those days occasionally. Don't let them get you down. Don't force trades. Just sit tight. If you can't, here's the thing. If you can't find a trade, you're better off to take no trade than to take a hit. So don't force trades on days where it's slow. If anything, just get up and go home. Just take the day off. Go spend it with your uh, whatever you like to do, whatever your hobby is, if you have kids and they're out, you know they're around, go spend it with your kids. I mean that's why we uh, that's why we want to become traders to to free up our time and become um, use that time to enjoy ourselves more, and not have to work all the time. So if you're like me and you're a workaholic, you probably still overwork, but at least you're doing something you want to do and not something you're forced to do. So. Um, I love trading. Trading doesn't feel like work to me. I love trading. Um, when I get a day off, I want to take it. Don't get me wrong. I like to get away from the charts. I like to take those long weekends. Uh, that's the reason I quit at noon on Fridays now, um, just to get more time away because I, you know, I don't trade and leave. I, I trade and then I work on the website and the teaching part of it. And, um, you know, I've always said, I'm not going to do this forever kind of got that time frame yet I'm not going to call that time frame yet uh, it's not tomorrow it's not this year it's not next year but it's coming up really fast so uh, I'll announce it at some time when I'm ready to retire and I, and I am getting really really close but we're not right upon it yet but it's closer than it has been so and uh, once I retire I don't even know what I'll do then I, I may still come in and do this part-time and trade occasionally while I'm here and I just don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to spend more time for myself and enjoy what I've built through trading. And uh, that's why we try to do this, to free up our time. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.